But right now, I want to talk to the chair of the Merseyside Police Federation, Chris McGlade. Hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, Morning, Carol. It's it, just so shocking to see what happened last night and to hear this morning that more than 50 of your police officers have been injured. Can you fill us in on the details, please? Yes, I can, Carol. And first and foremost, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of myself and all my colleagues at Merseyside Police, you know, our thoughts at this time remain with the families of those three young girls. Uh, last night's incident is horrific. And you know, as per the statements I've released this morning, you know, officers come into work to protect our communities and to keep them safe. Uh, they do not come in to be subject to what I can only describe as horrific <clears throat> excuse me, acts of violence. Uh, you know, I sit in front of me now with a list of officers and their injuries, you know, and it reads from broken ankles to broken fingers to concussion to CT scans, uh, people who've lost their teeth, uh, you know, and they're going to wake up this morning and have to explain to their families uh, what's occurred. There must be such an influence now on morale in the police force because many of these same police officers who've been injured I would imagine were involved in the events of Monday and obviously Tuesday too Yeah absolutely uh, and you know many of them were, were working yesterday, they attended the shift yesterday you know to provide reassurance to yeah. the community of Southport uh, and then towards the end of the shift having headed back towards their station they've then been recalled uh, and obviously the shift has ended in a way that, well, it should never end. Um, and, and as you say, you know, that, that will deeply affect morale. Uh, I also think it's worthy to note, you know, the impact that this has had on the NHS again, you know, at a time when they've had, you know, horrific incidents to deal with this week. And now on top of that, they're having to provide uh, first aid and injury support to, you know, over 50 officers. Uh, it, it really is disgusting. Chris, you, obviously you will have seen on social media um, what I suspect, and we will be talking about this on the programme in the next hour, uh, what fuelled the anger was a false story on social media. It gave a, a wrong name, I believe. Um, it said that the assailant was from Syria, which was wrong. It said he came over on a boat. Wrong. He was born in this country. Uh, did, did this... Um, did this give you a clue as to what might happen last night? I think it, it, it would be wrong for me to comment on the operational side of, okay. of the policing operation yesterday. But I think you, you've, for me, you've, you've summed it up quite eloquently, which is I think the police have, and the local authorities, the government have been very clear as to the nationality and the background of the individual who's currently in custody. Uh, it, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment mm -hmm. further on that. Uh, but I think uh, what it certainly doesn't do in any way is justify what's taken place last night. Uh, you know, and again, I haven't seen the footage myself for those people that live in that local area and their children who've had to witness this. Uh, it, just horrific. The mosque isn't far away from where um, where the children were killed on Monday. I believe it's only it's less than half a mile away. Is that right, Chris? I, 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 it's certainly within a, some, uh, the vicinity, yes. And how, you know, we had reports on my colleague Nick Ferrari's show this morning that, you know, local people were going into that area around the mosque and clearing things up <clears> and, <throat> and saying, you know, that the mosque is part of their community. Uh, you know, how can the police move forward after this? I think I think you know all all of my colleagues will, will realise you know as has been touched on that you know this group last night represents a very very small proportion of society and and probably none of the local community in Southport. Uh, the reality is prior to last night, officers were being greeted on the streets by members of the public offering to provide them with food, drink, thanking them for being in the area and for the work they've done. And I'm pretty sure that that'll carry on today with the, you know, with the many officers who've been called in today uh, to obviously backfill what what is now a police force that's got less than you know, 50 officers less available to us than it did yesterday. Chris McGlade, thank you so much. Um, and you know, 
please give our thanks to all of the hard work that uh, the police officers are, are putting in and to everyone in the emergency services. Chris McGlade, thank you for joining us this morning.